What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Trey Codes. My name is Trey Hope as always, and today's topic of discussion will be push notifications. I'm sure everyone already knows what push notifications are or you've seen it somewhere. Um, pretty much if you get a message on Instagram and your phone is off or you might not be in the app currently, you'll get a notification saying so-and-so sent you a message on Instagram. Push notifications is a way that you can continuously update your users activity in the app without them being present. So today I'm going to discuss how to set up for both iOS and Android and show you how to send notifications to both users specifically as well as topics. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so in order to download our packages, we need to go into our pubspec.yaml file of our Flutter project. And as you can see here, we have five uh, packages that we're using. We don't need Cupertino icons. This just comes by default, so just ignore this. But the ones that we need to focus on is Cloud Firestore, Firebase Core, Firebase Messaging, and HTTP. So with Cloud Firestore, this allows us to use the Cloud Firestore database. And we need this because we're going to be storing the FCM tokens of each device into a database. And we need that because we, uh, we need the FCM token to know where the push notification is going to go. Firebase core package is necessary because in order to connect our apps to Firebase, we need this package. Without it, we can't use Firestore, Firebase messaging, or any other, other Firebase um, applications. Uh, Firebase messaging is needed because in order to configure our app uh, to know what to do when we receive messages, we need this package right here. It also allows us to subscribe and unsubscribe from topics, and I'll explain a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later. And then finally, we need the HTTP package because when we send a push notification, we're essentially making a, uh, a RESTful request, and we need this package in order to send that request. So these are the four packages that you need. Once you have those in there, run flutter pub get it's going to download all of our packages for us good now we're ready to start the configuration for our ios device all right so to configure um, ios for push notifications um, first we need to enable push notifications and background modes uh, within Xcode. So in order to open up Xcode, we can just double click iOS and hit open in Xcode. And as you see, as you can see here, I already have Xcode open. So um, I'll save us a little bit of the time. But what we want to do is we want to select runner and then make sure that we have uh, targets selected in runner. And then from there, um, uh, we need to go to signing and capabilities. So right here, you'll see this button that says capability. We're going to add the background modes capability. So we'll double click that. And we wanna make sure we turn on background fetch and remote notifications. And then we want to look for push notifications. Uh, double click that. All right, so now we've added both of these capabilities. So we're good on that part. Now what we need to do is we need to link APNS with FCM. AP, APNS is Apple Push Notifications. FCM is Fly, Firebase Cloud Messaging. So first we need to register a key. So we need to come over to our Apple developer account. As you can see here, I'm already logged in. Um, and we need to register a key. So we need to go to keys. And right here we already have, I already have the key available for like other products I've been using. And you can use the say, same APNS key for different projects. Uh, as you can see here, I use the same one, but basically what you'll do is you'll select the key, give it a name, and then make sure that Apple push notification service is selected. So from there, it'll generate a key and then you'll be able to download it. So make sure that you store it in a secure location. Uh, that way you can use it for later. Um, so once you have the key, you then can come over to Firebase, uh, your Firebase project, right? So uh, we're in the demo project, which is what we'll be using for our example. We'll uh, select this cog right here, go to project settings, select cloud messaging, and then down here for uh, iOS, we will upload our APNS alt key. Now I won't do it for this example because when you upload it, you have to input the key ID and team ID 
and I want to keep those private so I won't show that. But just know when you download that APNS key that you just uh, downloaded from the Apple developer account, it'll provide that information. So you want to make sure you store all that. So that's how you register the key. Um, from there, you need to register an app identifier. So we'll come back to the app, Apple developer console, go to identifiers. And as you can see here, here's some identifiers for other products I have. I already have one made for this example, um, com example, Patreon X. But the process for creating an identifier is you click this. Uh, it's going to be app IDs, uh, select app. Um, and then you're going to enter the bundle ID. Now the bundle ID is simply the bundle identifier right here. So you can just copy that, put it in, um, and then add, add a description. And then make sure that you come down and select push notifications. Once you do that, uh, you'll be able to hit continue and then your identifier will be present right here. So that's all you do on that end. And then um, finally, we need to generate a provisioning profile. The provisioning profile enables sign communication between Apple and your application. Uh, and this is really for, um, since messaging can only be used on real devices, a signed certificate ensures that the app is being installed on a device that is genuine, and has the correct permissions enabled. So what we need to do is go to profiles, uh, and then we will select uh, plus profile. And then um, for this example, you can do iOS app development. Um, but if you're you know, distributing to the app store, you will select the app store instead. Um, hit continue. And then you will select the app ID that you made, which would be that Patreon X one. Uh, I'm not gonna go all through this because we've already done that. But essentially once you do that, uh, then you'll hit continue and then you'll have your provisioning profile available. Uh, and it'll be listed here. Now, as I mentioned, it's only for, uh, you only really need that when you're actually distributing. Um, since this is just development, we don't need to do that. So that's why you don't see one for the, the Patreon X. But essentially those are the three things that you need to do uh, when you're configuring for iOS. So now that that's out the way, let's go ahead and talk about the configuration for Android. So for Android integration, there's some good news. If you are using Flutter Android Embedding V2, which is a Flutter version that is greater than or equal to 1.12, then there's no additional integration steps that are required. And so since uh, we are currently on Flutter, version are we on, let me see, um, 2.53. So yeah, we're way beyond 1.12. So Android integration really is only necessary if you're using an older version of Flutter. So luckily, um, you should be on a pretty recent recent version of Flutter. So we'll go ahead and skip this step and we can actually just go ahead and jump into the coding aspect of this example. All right, so for our notification service, um, I created four methods here. One method is going to send a notification to a user. The other is going to send it to a group of devices. And then we have methods for unsubscribing and subscribing to topics, which essentially says, hey, give me notifications for this topic or don't give me notifications for this topic. So first thing we need to do is uh, instantiate the Firebase messaging class. So we do that right here. Then we create the endpoint that we'll be sending the notifications to, which is fcm.googleapis.com slash fcm send. Then we specify the content type, which is application slash JSON. And then for the authorization, that's going to be key equals that server key that we get from Firebase. So this key right here for server key, this is under cloud messaging in your Firebase project. You wanna copy that and say key equals that key. Uh, if you don't do that, then you won't be able to send notifications uh, to this endpoint. So the send notification method is pretty simple. We just create a JSON object uh, with uh, these fields two, which is going to be where um, the notification is going to set the priority to high. Uh, I assume that means that this notification takes uh, precedence over the other notifications that you might be receiving. Um, and then we have a notification body, which we just pass in the title and body and then set content available to true. 
From there, we make a HTTP call, make sure it's a post. Um, and then we call the endpoint, pass in the uh, data for the body, and then our headers is going to be the content type that we specified uh, up top and the authorization that we specified up top as well. Um, and then from there, uh, we have, like I said, we have our unsubscribe from topic. So we call Firebase Messaging's uh, dot unsubscribe from topic, and then the inverse for subscribing to a topic. And then for um, sending a notification to a user, we pass in the FCM token. Um, and then for sending it to a group, we call slash topic slash whatever that topic was. So it would read like this topic slash news, but since we're passing in the group, we're concatenating it this way. So we'll just leave it like that. So that's all you have to do for the service. Now in our demo page where the UI is actually at, uh, we're going to uh, first instantiate Firebase messaging again. Um, we created a text controller because we're going to be typing in the notification that we want to send to the other user. Then we need to make a reference to our database uh, in Firebase where we keep uh, those tokens. So um, as you see here, uh, we're going to have a token for the Android device we're using and a token for the iOS device we're using. So that's what that's for. And then we need to uh, make a, an instance of our Firebase cloud messaging noti notification service. Also, we need to um, create a late string variable that represents the device, uh, the FCM token of the device we'll be sending to. So if I'm on Android, the other device token will be the FCM token of the iOS device. I believe I said that right. If I'm on Android, I want the iOS token. If I'm on iOS, I want the Android token. So we come down to our init state. Uh, first thing we want to do is subscribe to the news topic because I'll be showing that in an example in a little bit of how when we send a notification to the news topic, we want both devices to receive a notification. So then we come down here. I made this load method that's simply going to uh, do some async calls. Uh, first thing that we want to do is request permission on iOS devices. Uh, on Android, you don't do this, but on iOS, you have to ask if the user can, um, if the app can send the user notifications. Um, then we want to fetch the FCM token um, of this device. So we call FCM.getToken. Then we need to validate that it's not null. So we call assert token does not equal null. If it is null, it'll throw an error. Otherwise, we'll keep going. And then we need to determine which device we're on. So we have uh, strings, this device and other device. We check to see which device we're on by calling platform.isios. If it is iOS, this device is iOS, the other one is Android and vice versa. From there, we need to update the FCM token for this device in Firebase. So we call tokensdb.doc, whatever this device is. So if it's iOS, we're going to set iOS, uh, the token for iOS, and we're gonna set the token for Android. Then we wanna fetch the FCM token for the other device because we're gonna be sending it to the notification to that other device. So we'll call uh, tokensdb.doc other device get, and we'll get that token value and set it to our other device token variable. And then down here is just the UI uh, within the build method. Uh, we have um, a text field where, where we will be um, typing in the text that we're sending. And then we have uh, a button that says send notification. Um, and basically the notification, we're going to send it to uh, a user on the app. So we'll say new notification for the title and then the body is going to be whatever text we enter. And then the FCM token is going to be that other device token. Uh, and then when we send it to, when we send a notification to the group, I'll be using um, Thunder Client in VS Code. Um, that way uh, we can send it to all devices. So let's go ahead and try this out.
hopefully you got a better understanding of how push notifications work for both iOS and Android. You now know how to send notifications to user devices as well as through topics. So hopefully this video was helpful as always. Please like, comment, subscribe. And if you need any help for any other topics related to Flutter or anything outside of Flutter, rather just development in general, please leave me a comment or send me a message and uh, hopefully I can make that happen in my next video. Until next time, talk to you later. Have a great day.